Hello everyone, welcome to the lecture series on PLC programming. In today's video, we're going to take a look at example number 9, which has the problem statement given below. Let us read the statement and try to understand the requirements. From there, we will be able to solve the given question. So in this uh, question, they started off uh, with respect to a pump operation. So they're saying that the, a pump is used to fill two storage tanks. The pump is manually started by the operator from start or stop station. When the first tank is full, the control logic must be able to automatically stop flow to the first tank and direct flow to the second tank through the use of sensors and electric solenoid valves. When the second tank is full, the pump must shut down automatically Indicator lamps are to be included to signal when each tank is full. Draw a sketch of the process. Prepare a typical PLC program for this control process. So at the first place what they are saying, there is a pump that is used to fill two storage tanks and uh, the pump is started manually through uh, the push button switches from the operator and uh, whenever the first tank is full, the stock, the flow of water should stop for the first tank and it should be redirected to the second tank. And this is done with the help of sensors and valves. When the second tank is full, the pump must shut down the entire process and indicator uh, lamps are to be included when the tank is full. So at the first place, let us draw the sketch of the process. So once that is done, it will give you a clear indication on how to proceed with the ladder diagram. So the sketch looks like this. So uh, you have a master control station which has a start and stop push button over here and it is used to control the pump. So pump is basically having a motor that will be able to control the flow of uh, any particular liquid that needs to be transferred within the system. So we basically have two valves. So solenoid valves that are used. So we're using two valves. This is valve number two. This is valve number one. And uh, we have uh, two sensor uh, switches that is float switch one and float switch two are the sensor switches that are used. So we have two tanks, tank one and tank two, which has some liquid. So what should happen? Once you press the start push button, the pump should start. That is the motor should start and uh, it will actually pump the water uh, or any other liquid that is there. And uh, the water starts flowing. Initially, it will be flowing through the tank one. And once tank one is filled, this valve should indicate that the tank is full and it should cut off the water level from this point. And once this is cut off, the entire water should be redirected through this point and this valve should turn on. Consequently, the water will flow through this. And once even this is full, there should be a lamp indicating that the tanks are full and there is no more requirement of turning this off. So the pump should basically go back to turn off condition. So how do we achieve this? So let us uh, take a look at the ladder diagram and uh, once you have a fair amount of understanding of the process, we can easily understand what is the ladder diagram actually trying to do. So let us go part by part, step by step as uh, with respect to the requirement and try to verify how this is the exact ladder diagram that is required for this question. So if you carefully observe, we have a start push button, stop push button. At the first place, uh, one important thing, the green ones are actually acting as short circuit. So at any point of time, if I use green color, that means it is actually acting as short circuit. So these are normally closed contacts. Since uh, they act as short circuit when they are not energized, they are indicated as green and they are acting as short circuit initially. Now what I will be doing is, now let us say there is an operator who goes and presses the start and stop push button. So for example, if he starts off the process by pressing the start push button, so this turns green, isn't it? Consequently, what happens? All of them are short circuited. So the current will be flowing through this path and uh, the internal relay will get energized. So I am using the name as IR. You can try it with different conventions as well. But actually the concept is whatever address is used, the same address will be used here as well. This concept is called as latching. So in case you haven't watched our previous videos about latching, please do watch it. That will give you a fair amount of understanding of what is latching all about. So since same address is used, so over here I'm using the same name, IR over here, over here, over here and over here. So if you carefully observe, according to latching, even this will go high because this is high now. So consequently, this will also be high. This will also be high and this will also be high. So since this is high, the entire rung will be high and the pump will turn on. So once I press the start push button, what is happening? The internal relay gets energized and internal relay uh, starts the pump over here and the pump starts. 
and it starts uh, pumping the water or any other liquid that is there in the system and consequently the process begins now what I will be doing is if you carefully observe all of them are actually short circuited isn't it so the current will be flowing through this path so the entire rung will get energized consequently coil valve 1 that is solenoid valve 1 will get actually activated and uh, this will open up and current the water starts flowing through this path and the tank actually starts filling at this point in time let us say at some point of time the entire uh, water or liquid in the uh, tank one will be full at some point of time the float switch will go high indicating that the tank is full it cannot accept any more water in it so at that time this gets energized so when this is energized it acts as short circuit and it is indicated in green same fs1 is used over here as well but it is a normally closed contact so when this is a normally closed contact when it is energized it acts as open circuit parallelly and as a result uh, if you see it is indicated in red and it acts as open circuit so since this is open circuit the entire path gets cut off because no current flows through this path and as a result coil or uh, valve one basically gets de energy so this valve will not allow any more water to flow through this path so now since uh, fs1 is energized if you carefully observe all the coils over here are energized and this acts as uh, a path for current to flow and coil valve 2 that is solenoid uh, valve 2 over here will get energized and activated consequently water will be flowing through this path at this point in time the water starts filling or the liquid that is there starts filling in tank number 2 and consequently at some point of time float switch 2 will also be triggered because at some point of time tank 2 will be filled isn't it so at that time when float switch 2 is actually activated over here so indicating that tank 2 is full what happens these are normally open contacts so it gets energized and acts as short circuit but over here it is normally closed contact so when they are energized so what happens this will act as open so this will act as open circuit again fs2 is used here this will also act as open circuit again fs2 is used over here as well so this will also act as open circuit so when this is open circuit no current will be flowing through this path isn't it so the entire uh, supply is cut off to the internal relay so ir will actually get de-energized since same address ir is used in different places all these coils will get de-energized in this particular fashion as a result if you carefully observe now what happens is that so ir of uh, all the coils are de-energized so over here the supply will get cut off coil 2 will be deactivated and uh, the pump also will uh, get deactivated over here as a result the pump stops that is the motor stops rotating consequently fs2 is activated and current starts flowing through this path and uh, the indicator lamp will turn on and the entire process comes to a halt so tank 1 is full tank 2 is full once both the tanks are full indicator lamp will be turning on by turning off the pump so this is how we have to uh, understand any problem or approach any problem slowly we have to go step by step build the concept and try to draw the ladder diagram and justify uh, if this is the right ladder diagram you might draw uh, different ladder diagrams in your own logic but at the end of the day you have to be able to uh, analyze that this is the right ladder diagram for these type of problems i hope this problem gave you a fair amount of idea on how to approach these type of problems in case you have any questions feel free to reach out by typing in your questions in the comment section below if you like this video please do like it share it and subscribe to our channel for regular updates thanks for watching this video meet you guys in another example thank you